Hey guys, how's it going? Josh here from Air Vapor and Lounge. Got a review for you today on the new IPv3 Li. I was pretty new to the market, haven't seen many reviews on it, so I figured I'd go over some information, give you guys some opinions and some details about it. I'm using right now the Fogwind Alliance RDA. It's a pretty nice RDA. We'll get into that in another review. Um, now the new IPv3 Li is using the Yihi SX 330 B3 SL board. Yes, that is quite a mouthful. But what that really translates to is that the temperature control is going to be very similar to the Yihi SX Mini M class, where we're using joules for our temperature control. Now, I do have this set right now to 525 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a 0.2 ohm build. I'm using NI200 28 gauge, about 14 wraps on a 3 millimeter pin. I've got it set at 50 joules. Warms up quick. Right now I'm vaping Premier Vapor Cayman. Now that is a little bit of a shameless plug, but it's really good. So there's a couple of things that they've changed about this IPv3. We have an active touch sensor up top, an improved fire switch, very clicky. I don't know if you can hear that or not. We'll find out in editing. We've got an improved battery door. It's a slide off, so no more chasing around for a screwdriver when we need to charge the batteries. No charge port. You do have a micro USB port on the bottom. That's strictly for firmware updates. Now, this is 165 watts out of the box. You're going to be able to update it to 200 watts. Granted, that's going to require some high drain batteries, but um, you've got room to go up. So for you power hungry vapors out there, you're going to have that coming soon and be able to push 200 watts. Now uh, temperature control is a little bit different and we'll get into more of that once we go up close. But in the meantime, let's have another vape. Alright guys, I'll see you in the close ups. Okay guys. Welcome to the up close and personal portion of this review for the IPv3 Li. Now you will notice that they did print the name of the board on the device, the Yihi SX330 V3 SL. Now some major differences you'll notice from the Li versus the original IPv3. The 510 connector is on the opposite side of the fire button do have the touch sensor which is active. You can turn that on and off. We've got a slide off battery door. Little insulator for battery protection. They do have battery direction indicators. Got a nice logo here, IPv3 Li a little warranty sticker there. There's a screw under there holding the cover on. Don't poke a hole through that or you'll void your warranty. Over here we have a little spring-loaded BB. Now that mates up to that little divot and it keeps the case from sliding off on its own. We do have a battery ribbon here. Pop out the batteries nice and quickly. Very handy. The spring portions of the connectors are on the same side here. These two are fixed. So make sure you match up your negative to your negative. Load in this one first, kind of in and down. And then positive to positive. Same thing, in and down on the same side. I'll fold that over a little bit. Slide this guy back out. You'll notice when this slides in, there are no major gaps around the edges. Very nice machining. Now you will see here that the chamfer is a little bit bigger here than it is here, but not a big deal. The buttons are very clicky. The edges are nice and smooth. Got the same Pioneer for You logo design here on the back. 
got battery venting here, micro USB port that is strictly for upgrading firmware. You will not be able to charge your batteries through this device. You'll notice that there is no charge port where the previous version originally had one there and then they put a plug in there and now it's just removed. So you will have to remove the batteries from the device to charge them. We do have a spring-loaded center pin. It does have this little slot here. Avoid the temptation to turn it with a screwdriver as you will damage the wiring, but that is a nice little spring-loaded connection there. Rel relatively stiff spring, so we should get good conductivity. Now, the menus. Five clicks to turn it on. You get the splash screen of the logo and then the name of the device, and the screen goes off. Now if I press the fire button, it'll say check atomizer because we don't have an atomizer connected. Now if I press up, you'll see it cycles through five presets. Now anybody who's used an IPV device before will notice that this is very much a pioneer for you thing. Very handy. I like having the presets. Now we are currently in dual mode. Now these presets in dual mode are adjustable so you can change the adjustment but it will not save in the presets. So those presets I guess are preset presets. After a few seconds the screen does go dark. The fire button or either the up or down button will bring that back and you'll notice again that the presets are the same. Let's see if we can see this here. Now if you press down first you'll see that that changes to ADJ for adjust. Then you can go down or up. The fire button sets it in. Now you can turn on and off the touch sensor by five clicks and then holding power and up at the same time we'll turn it on power button or fire button and down at the same time we'll turn the touch sensor off and you get the appropriate touch on or touch off all right five clicks again to get into our menu and you can press up or down to turn the device off. You can go to power mode or dual mode. In power mode, there's only system on, power mode, or exit to get out of the menu. Five clicks to get back in there. System on, exit, and mode. Now if we go to dual mode, we'll get a couple more options. We'll get our units for Fahrenheit or Celsius, and we'll get our temperature. Now this goes up to 572, and it goes down to 212. You can see that there is a mild acceleration, but it does take a little while to get all the way from the top end to the bottom end. Go through it just so you can see it. 212. There it is. That won't go down anymore. Go back up. We'll leave it at about 350 ish. And then exit. You can press up or down. They both do the same thing. It exits the menu. And you'll notice that there's no settings here. There's no voltage display, no ohm uh, display, and there's our temperature setting. Now if we put our nickel build RDA back on here, there's a step you have to take before you can get this to accurately control the temperature. Now this is much like the Yehi SX Mini M class. You hold up and down at the same time and it sets the resistance. Now you want to do that when it's at room temperature. And that'll get you the most accurate resistance because as the temperature rises, the resistance of the nickel changes. So that'll get you the most accurate temperature control. Now it's set at 350 degrees. 
cotton is fairly dry, you'll see that it's not giving us much vapor here. And when it senses that the temperature is rising too quickly, we'll get this warning message. Dry coil, no liquid. And it just about refuses to burn that cotton. Now I've been using this for a while, so my coils are getting a little bit of buildup on them. In the center there, I may have a hot spot, but no burning cotton. So the temperature limiting function does work. Now you'll notice that that setting is 49.6. If I cycle through my presets again, you'll notice that they are back to the factory setting. So those presets again are non-adjustable. Now, if I take this off of here, and put on my regular Canthal build, We'll go through the power menu settings. Five clicks to get in there. We'll click once more to get to mode, and we'll go to power, and then exit. Now here, let's see if we can get that to show up on the screen. M5, M1, M2, and so on five presets. Now to change those presets, go to the preset that you want to change and then press down. And then you press down or up to change the setting. Once you get to your desired preset setting, what you're going to do is go ahead and press the fire button once. Now, as long as you have an atomizer on there, that will lock in the preset. So now if I cycle around the presets back, you'll see M1 is where I set it. So these five presets are changeable. And it does fire up pretty quickly. There's not a lot of ramp up time, so that's nice. Get a little liquid on these coils here. You can get kind of an idea about how fast that ramp up time is. Not a whole lot of waiting. And that's at 79.5. You can see the touch sensor does work. Very nice. All right, guys, well, I hope I covered everything in the up close, and I'll see you back up topside. All right, guys, so I figured I'd throw a regular Canthal build on there, show you how it does, do some different settings, because I know there's all kinds of different vapors out there, all kinds of different preferences. Right now I've got it set to 30 watts. This is a 0.17 ohm dual coil build. Using 22 gauge Canthal and about five wraps each on a three millimeter pin. So I got the airflow closed off, just one slot open, 30 watts. Let's see what she does. Yeah, just 30 watts, not much. That's going to be good for you, take guys, though. It's nice to be able to have the presets. Let's crank her up to 55. It's getting a little better. Let's open up the airflow a bit. We got her fully open. Let's go to 80 watts. 80 watts. Oh yeah, that's where I like it. 80 watts. That's my ideal vape. Let's go for 100. See what it does. Now you got to move some air past those coils to keep them cool. I don't know if I even want to push 165 to it. 
Let's try it. Not bad. Definitely get some different flavors out of that liquid. 65, 165 is definitely more than I'll ever use. Like I said, I like it right around 80. Nice and warm, not too hot. Plenty of vapor, nice and dense. Good stuff. So overall, I'd say I really like the IPv3LI. It's got a lot of power and temperature control works very well. I like the updates. I like that the connection is on the other side. The battery door is a big improvement. Uh, I thought it was going to be magnetic, but it's a slide off. I think I prefer that. Overall, I think all the changes to the IPv3 LI are definitely well thought out. I definitely like this device. Temperature control works great. I like the new switches, I like the screen. Anybody who wishes to get one of these, I think would be happy with it. I hope you guys have found this review informational, and we'll see you on the next one.